Hey, what's up you lot, Path here. A little while ago, I asked you on the communities tab of my channel, what kind of video you wanted me to make next. And most of you voted on a thermodynamics video. So here we are. Today, we'll be discussing a couple of concepts that are often badly defined. It's actually taken me a long time to get my head around these and I'm still getting my head around them. And they may seem simple enough on the surface, but it turns out they're a little bit more subtle than that. We use these words, these concepts that we're going to be talking about in everyday life to mean slightly different things to what they mean in thermodynamics. The words in question, like you might have seen from the title, are work and heat, both of which, like I said, we use in day-to-day -day life, and they mean slightly different things to what they mean in thermodynamics. So if you enjoyed this video, please do hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel for more fun physics content. Let's get into it. Thermodynamics, according to Wikipedia, is the branch of physics that deals with heat and temperature and the relation to energy, work, radiation, and properties of matter. So with that being said, we're going to be looking at the thermodynamic definitions of work and heat. Let's start with work. In everyday usage, we use work to mean an activity that we have to do in a relatively general sense. However, those of you studying physics will have learned that work is defined as a force multiplied by a distance moved by that particular force. Well, thermodynamic work is a little bit more of a specialization of that particular definition. Let's imagine we've got a box, a container of some sort, and this box is filled with gas molecules. We've got a gas inside this box. These gas molecules are moving around inside the box and bouncing off each other and the walls of the box, as gas molecules often tend to do. These gas molecules are considered our system. It's the thing that we're studying. Well, our system is said to do work if it can exert macroscopic or large-scale forces on its surroundings, and these forces must be measurable, or at least the effects of these forces must be measurable. That is what we mean by work. Imagine, for example, instead of a solid box, we've got one wall that is a piston. For simplicity, let's assume that there's no air or atmosphere outside the box. The only gas that exists in this particular scenario is the gas inside our box. And also for simplicity, let's assume that our piston has a very low mass. Well, gas particles, like we said earlier, will be moving around inside our box in all sorts of random directions. They will collide with each other, and many of them will collide with the wall of our piston. All these microscopic collisions with the wall of our piston will result in a very real macroscopic measurable force on the piston. Because any particle colliding with our piston wall, whether it be head on or at an angle, will exert a force on our piston wall, in this particular case to the right, all of those forces will add up, resulting in a macroscopic or large scale force on the piston to the right. This macroscopic force ends up pushing the piston to the right, as we'd expect. And because of this, we say that our system, our gas, is doing work on its surroundings, in this case, the piston. So that's a basic description of work. Let's now look at a description of heat. Heat is a bit more of a tricky concept. In everyday usage, we talk about heat or how hot something is as almost a direct analog of the temperature of an object. But that's not quite what heat means in the thermodynamic sense. Heat and temperature are indeed closely related concepts, but they're not exactly the same. In thermodynamics, heat is specifically defined as the transfer of energy, either to or from our system, in any way that isn't work or due to particles leaving or entering the system. In other words, heat is a transfer of energy. That's important. And it ain't work, and it ain't due to particles leaving or entering. It's got nothing to do with an open system. Here we're dealing with a closed system. But this is also why some physicists will scoff when you say heat energy, because you're saying energy transfer energy or transfer of energy energy. So the important points to note are the following. Heat is not the same thing as temperature. Temperature is a measure of the amount of thermal energy in a system already, whereas heat is defined specifically as the transfer of energy. And importantly, it's not energy transfer by a large macroscopic force, like we saw in the case of work. Because if there was a large macroscopic force involved in that energy transfer, that would be defined as work. So it's not heat. For example, I could stick a Bunsen burner underneath our box, which contains our gas. This would result in a transfer of energy to the base of the box due to the increased jiggling of atoms making up the base. And eventually gas particles that collide with the base of the box would take this energy away with them. They would increase their jiggling as well. But there's no large scale or macroscopic force being exerted here. Every particle is taking away a separate amount of jiggliness based on its collisions and which part of the box it collides with. And so this is heat, it's not work. This topic is super subtle and super finicky, and I haven't gone into all the subtleties, but hopefully you can see some of the differences between heat and work. And also, more importantly, what work and heat mean in a thermodynamic sense compared to what they mean in an everyday usage sense. That's not to say, by the way, that when people use work and heat in the everyday sense, 
that that's incorrect somehow. That's not incorrect, they're just not using it in the thermodynamic way. And it's important for us as physicists to know when we need to be using the everyday sense of the word and when we need to use the thermodynamic sense of the word. And with all of that being said, I'm going to end this video here. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please do leave a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments down below if I've got anything wrong. I'll try and correct it as quickly as possible, because like I said, these definitions are rather subtle and finicky. And if there's something that you didn't quite understand, leave it in the comments down below as well, and I'll try and clarify. Also in the comments, give me some topics that you want me to work on for future videos. Last couple of bits of self-plug, if you're interested in some of the music that I produce and post online, then head over to my second channel, Path G Shenanigans, and follow me on Instagram at Path Vlogs if you're interested in seeing what I do on a bit more of a day-to-day -day basis. With all that being said, once again, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you really soon. Bye-bye-bye-bye.